I don't know. I, I think it's extremely broadly defined to get to this clickbait number or that they actually believe it and they just don't understand what NAS actually is. I mean, not that any of us are NAS experts because I, I don't know who's figured out yet what, what NAS is. Uh, but to me, network as a service is not just anything that gets delivered running over a network. Welcome to the Cables to Clouds podcast, your one-stop shop for all things hybrid and multi-cloud networking. Now, here are your hosts, Tim, Chris, and Alex. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Cables to Clouds uh, fortnightly news podcast. I still can't get it right, um, whether we're saying bi-weekly or fortnightly. But uh, yeah, so here is going to be your next uh, roundup of cloud news for the last two weeks. Uh, my name is Chris Miles at BGP Maine on Twitter and joined as always um, are my beautiful co-host Tim McConaughey at Juan Gobez on Twitter and Alex Perkins at Bumps in the Wire on Twitter. So without, um, without further ado, let's, let's go ahead and jump into it. So we have a few articles to cover this week. Um, again, we put all this into a, a, a public facing document. So if you want to look at any of these articles in depth, um, and there's actually some, some extra news offerings in there that we don't talk about on the show as well. So if you want to have a look in the show notes once this episode's over and, and have a further look, uh, please do and, and, and let us know if you had any feedback. All right, first up. So we have a news article here from Globe Newswire, which is all about um, basically a summary from a report, uh, a research uh, uh, report that was put together by SNS Insider talking about the network as a service uh, market size growing uh, by 2032 up to 285 billion uh, with B. Um, so as of, I believe it's saying as of right now, it's... Um, valued at about 19.2 billion or sorry 19.2 billion in 2023 so last year and they're expecting it to reach up to about 285 billion by 2032 um so they they kind of correlate this to you know the the typical stuff you know the widespread adoption of cloud um the need for agility the need for um you know scalable networks on demand type thing um pretty much just sounds like the cloud, to be honest with you, the way, the way it's described in this. Um, but it's for network as a service. Um, and they, they inf- uh, emphasize a bit about the government investments in this realm, um, which is, uh, as we know, is a very popular thing. Um, they mentioned some of the major players that they have in, in this particular, uh, bit of research here. And it's, I'll be honest with you, it was kind of surprising to me to see some of these major players that they have listed out um, being, you know, Juniper, Cisco, IBM, VMware, um, even uh, AT&T, Ariaka, things like that. Um, and then they kind of mentioned some newcomers being like uh, companies like Akamai um, and Cloudflare working with Kindrel. It's weird they bring up Cloudflare working with Kindrel that's deploying a Versa solution. So it's like layered in there. But um you know, th- this is um, this is interesting. I, I, I knew network as a service was going to be a popular thing since it's, you know, inception, you know, a few years back. Um, but one thing that is really confusing to me um, by at least a report like this um, is the, it seems like the classification of network as a service is so, so broad. Like anything can be counted as network as a service. Um, and I'm wondering if that's maybe why the 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 market cap is growing so much. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Um, the, the the more I read about this, the more I would just figured that just sounds like standard networking to me, or it sounds like SD WAN, or it sounds like cloud, right? So it, it it was kind of confusing to me. Yeah, I think um, the the biggest thing I took away from this article is that the people who wrote this report, I don't know who they're talking to, but they're obviously talking to the old guard. Because network is a service, you don't see Graphian in this list. You don't see, you don't, um, see Nile. Alkir, Nile. you don't see Nile at all. Where the hell's Nile in this list? This, the, you know, practically, I mean, they're on the Gartner Magic Quadrant for this list. They're not in this article. Uh, and so I actually take their numbers with a huge grain of salt, especially because they're so broadly defining it. So like they put CloudFront, uh, Cloudflare in here, right? Or like uh, content delivery networks. I know it has the word network in it, but like the content delivery network isn't, in my opinion, network as a service because, you know, we're not delivering network services. We're delivering content, right? Like, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's extremely 
broadly defined to get to this clickbait number or that they actually believe it and they just don't understand what NAS actually is. I mean, not that any of us are NAS experts because I, I don't know who's figured out yet what, what NAS is. Uh, but to me, network as a service is not just anything that gets delivered running over a network. Yeah, I completely agree with both of you. I mean, it's weird because they even they also call out WAN as a service and LAN as a service in this article. And it's like, why, why are you even doing that? That doesn't even make sense. If you have network as a service, why are you sub compartmentalizing even more? Um, and I agree. There's just, there's not really a good definition of, of NAS. Like we, we were trying to look this up and if you search it, Nile has an article where they are announcing that they're in the Gartner magic quadrant for NAS, but there's no like good definition of what a NAS actually is. Um, and yeah, like Juniper being in here, what, do they have that has anything to do with cloud or, or even know, NAS. Just a, Yeah. Yeah. It, one, one thing that it was, I will say that I, I was, I, I read this report and I immediately was like, maybe I just don't understand what NAS is. Maybe that's my fault. So I, I threw it into chat GPT and I said, what is network as a service? And I'll be honest, the response it gave me was just as broad. Um, and, and it did include content delivery networks, which I guess in a sense, I can fully understand how that's a network as a service, right? You're paying for the distribution of the content, the caching of the content, but it's like, it's kind of, it's not just the network, right? It's, it's, it's like over so a network. much. It's over a network, but it's so much more than that. Like, I don't think you would say it's. I mean, if you said CDN as a service, sure. Like, <laughs> but like network That's as a service, we need I, is I more terms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Database more as, as a service. service. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah. So yeah, that's good. All right. <clears throat> well, we'll we'll get a definition of NAS at some point, and and we'll talk about it on one of our shows. Um. Let's move on to the mandatory AI announcements. Uh, so scale AI, um, I'm going to call them, even though we realized if you type in scale.ai, it redirects to scale.com, which was, I thought, a little weird. Uh, they announced a partnership, a multi-year strategic partnership with AWS uh, to accelerate enterprise and public se sector generative AI adoption. So I don't I don't know a whole lot about this platform, but what my understanding is, they are kind of a middleman between your enterprise data and all these different models that are available and out there, um, especially in something like AWS where they have uh, Amazon Bedrock, which is like a marketplace basically for a bunch of different kinds of models. So it seems like like the gist of this is you scale takes your data and then they interface with all these different platforms and they return your data in a way that makes it much easier for these businesses to kind of use and actually get, get useful information from and understand because right. When you ask an AI for something, you get a lot of responses back and sifting through all that data, like people that are not working with this every day might have a lot of trouble kind of figuring all that out. So scale is there to kind of help them, figure out, you know, what to do with the responses and and kind of how to secure their data as well, which is something we talk about a, a lot on here. Um, thing I thought was kind of funny, I was looking up some of these. If you look at some of the links in this article, it kind of goes into their marketplace pages with AWS. This platform is a million dollars a month. And then there's also tokens for use uh, as you when you use it. Um, and that's just for the regular scale. It's called the scale gen AI platform. Um, and then they announced also this scale Donovan product, which is supposed to be for public sector customers, which I'm sure, you know, is meant to be more secure. Um, and that has its own, its own like charge on top of all of this. So <laughs> I, AI is already expensive. I don't know people that are also going to spend another million dollars a month plus usage tokens on top of what they're already having to spend for AI. So that's what, what do you guys think? Dude, that's insane. Like a million dollars a month. I know I get it right. The, 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 all the checkbooks are open with blank checks for generative AI, anything, right? If you put AI yeah. on something, all of a sudden everybody's got infinite money for it, but that's just, I can't even imagine the value because you think about it, right? Like a, a business has to figure out what is the value add? What is the ROI on this investment, right? So what business has so much 
data available that needs this extra layer of sifting and 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 structuring that the the, the time they will save is equal to or exceeding a million dollars a month. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, I mean, let, let, let's give them the benefit of the doubt here. So the when we say a million dollars a month, it's what's listed on the marketplace, AWS marketplace. True. Yep. As someone that works for a vendor that exchanges with customers, or uh, sorry, uh, transacts with customers out of the AWS marketplace, there are private offers to get around this stuff all the time. That might be a list price that's just put out there to make sure that customers aren't directly consuming this platform without, you know, working with, you know, sales reps to, you know, come to a term deal or something like that. I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, that that is the price tag on there. And that's going to deter a lot of people right off the bat. Um, given like, uh, I, I don't like, I get the need for this where they're going, um, where they're going with, you know, like, you know, the customers out there want to consume AI, but they don't have this large amount of trust. Um, and, and, you know, they have data privacy and security concerns and things like that. Um, but I don't necessarily see how this man in the, is this man in the middle just to say that like, Hey, we're going to protect you from AWS in the long run. Cause we, we've been making that argument on this pod for a while that like, is it really safe to give all your data just to AWS, you know, without, um, you know, without batting an eye. Um, but like, are you in turn just giving it to scale in this scenario? Like, I don't necessarily understand that. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah that's so you give it to them. Um, but like, I don't know. It, 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 do you know, Alex, did they say this was exclusive with AWS or is this, are, are we planning to see this probably come out for Azure and GCP and then it just be this kind of middle in the, or man in the middle platform that you exchange data with that runs the, the AI, um, you know, inferencing on the back end? Yeah, it's definitely not exclusive because um, okay. I did see somewhere, I don't think it's in this article, but somewhere in when I was researching, I saw that they have some kind of partnership with OpenAI as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's not exclusive, but I think the reason it's significant with AWS is because I don't, the Microsoft or GCP even have a marketplace that's kind of like Bedrock, right? AWS is the only one that has that's like true. a that's true. multiple yeah. model options, right? Like micro, um, right. Azure and GCP just have OpenAI and, and, and uh, offering and that's it, right? And uh, so, Gemini, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, a, that's a fair point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, even that they have this specific, um, product called Donovan, which looks like it's marketed specifically towards the public sector and government, yeah. um, which is surprising, um, because I think as we all know, probably the public sector and, you know, government, FedRAMP, things like that is not, uh, are not early adopters in this realm. So I'm surprised they, they're even leading with this, to be honest with you. But, you know, um, I guess they're also going to be the ones that are going to be the most stringent about their, you know, data privacy and things like that. So, yeah, I, I think that's them like trying to get ahead of things because it even, right. the, if you look at Donovan, it even says that they are working towards FedRAMP high accreditation they don't yeah. have it and that process takes a significant amount of time so right i think it's just them like drumming up they're, they're, interest, yeah they're they're beating you know? the drum on this and saying yeah, hey we're absolutely. gonna government you should use us basically and it does say that <clears throat> donovan has some kind of like i guess they must have some kind of like waiting in there that is specifically for like defense and intelligence agency um just like common things that Agencies like that would use, it sounds like. I just, I don't see the government, those agencies specifically ever, no matter how, what certifications are, are issued, handing over the keys to the kingdom to a private, to any company, right? It, it, it does depend on the agency, right? Because you have um, GovCloud, like this is like publicly available knowledge. Yeah, so you have course. like, you know, data centers that are built supposedly on like the CIA you know, uh, campus basically. So there is stuff like that, but I, I, it, it's very agency dependent. Like you're not going to get a lot of these small agencies that are using stuff like this. It's going to be the very well-known, well-funded, more secretive agencies for sure. Tim, are you, are you implying that the government typically operates with the, um, uh, with the actual benefit of the consumer in mind? 
Oh no, I would care. never. I would never actually <laughs> imply that. That would be ridiculous. That's the that's the tin foil hat moment for for today's episode. I don't know. Is it is it a is it a tin foil hat if if it's like obvious and clear? <laughs> it's just it's just a regular hat, dude. It's just a that's a that's a, that's a Yankee cap right there. That's a that's Yankee right. fitted. Okay, uh, moving on. So uh, again, in case you're only just started tuning into us, uh, it's relevant to point out that uh, Alex, I'm sorry, Alex, uh, Chris and myself work for Aviatrix, uh, which is a cloud networking vendor. And the reason I bring that up is because one of our news articles this week is about a new uh, partnership between Megaport and Aviatrix. So uh, we just launched this on Tuesday. Uh, I've been testing it internally for like a month now. Um, it's pretty cool. So you can now build the Aviatrix Edge platform, which is uh, it runs as bare metal or as uh, virtual. In this case, it's going to be through Megaport, so it's virtual. Uh, we have so it, it's the Aviatrix platform essentially. We call it Edge. It's running in Megaport's uh, environment and. You know, so using all of the front end that Megaports provides, you can spin up the Aviatrix Edge and connect it to any of the clouds that Megaport has connectivity to using private circuits or internet, uh, and then connect it to your existing or new Aviatrix environment and, you know, bring it in middle mile connectivity uh, to the cloud. So we're, we're embracing hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud is a big deal for us. So we already have a partnership with Equinix. We now have this partnership with Megaport, making it super easy to just, you know, if you're a Megaport customer already, you, it's three clicks and you can get started. Or if you're an Aviatrix customer already and uh, looking at, to expand into hybrid like Megaport uh, data centers, same thing, uh, just get it up and going. So that's a new capability that we're offering. What do you guys think, of, uh, think about that? Well, Tim, the network is the cloud, right? That's what I've heard. I've heard that the network is the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so please, can you explain what the, what that means for us? Okay, yeah. yeah. I've, I, what's funny about this is I've gotten I've actually gotten this this uh, specific question probably eight or ten times this week. <laughs> so for the, if you if you didn't if you have no idea what we're talking about, um, uh, one of the things Aviatrix did as part of the launch, uh, uh, just a general launch uh, and the launch with Megaport um, was to kind of coin the phrase. Uh, the network is the cloud. So if you're not familiar with this, um, this is a harken back, <laughs> and it's very, very possible, if unless you're one of the old guard, you probably aren't familiar with this. It's a harken back to a 1984 uh, ad advertisement run by Sun Microsystems uh, saying the network is the computer. So the, what they were saying at that time, of course, think about that, you know, it's 1984, um, servers were pretty new. So the idea of, of, of decentralizing compute and running applications and stuff on different computers was a huge step forward. Like it just, it didn't happen at that time. You had a computer and it did everything you wanted and it sat in your room. So the idea that the network is the computer was a, a, a brand new idea. So uh, the network is the cloud is kind of taking that, moving it forward, flipping it around for cloud and saying, uh, basically, nothing you run in the cloud is going to be done without some kind of a network, right? So the network is the cloud. Literally, all of your applications, taking that uh, loose coupling framework that we talk about and the, the CSPs talk about where you decentralize all your apps and your app functions, the network becomes the cloud. The network. I mean, technically, the network is the cloud. Literally, if you want to get literal about it, obviously, the CSPs have huge hyperscale uh, network infrastructures underpinning the whole thing, but I think the the idea is more to the fact of nothing you run in the in the cloud that's you know an application is going to be without any kind of networking. So that's the long and short of it. The the real question is uh, is is the cloud network as a service? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, it depends on how you broadly define it, right? If we're just saying, <laughs> if we're saying everything that runs over a network is now a network as a service, then I guess hell, everything's network as a service. Oh yeah, dude, the like the you remember when you remember when somebody figured out how to make a they were like transmitting um, Ethernet over pasta or whatever. Is that is that yes. Do you yep. you didn't see that Tim? <laughs> I didn't. I don't know this one. Yeah, it's like people had like these like pieces of spaghetti, and they were somehow like 
putting uh, Ethernet frames over it. It was crazy. Oh, that's so, hilarious. Yeah. So that's network as a service as well. Just anything that's a network is as a service to me now. Um, but yeah, not much to add there. Um, I think um, I think we've been pretty vocal on this podcast, at least I have been, that um, people that are doing connectivity, um, specifically, uh, I'll call out Equinix and Megaport, do things very well. Um, and they do it so well because they embrace simplicity and like, interacting with their platform is relatively simple. Um, I know sometimes it might have its quirks here and there, but it works very well um, when you need it to. Um, and, you know, um, that really matters when, you know, defining network connectivity. So, um, yeah, really, really, uh, um, hopefully this is peas in a pod type thing, right? Uh, that's what we want to see. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, I haven't really done a whole lot with Megaport, um, but they – both of them, it sounds like, do make it very transparent and easy. And it's like you almost have to deal with one of them to connect up anywhere anyway. Right. And they've just kind of become invisible in that middleman area. So that's a good Yeah. Point. The Megaport is enabled in what over – it's like 800 data centers across Eight, the world. 850 uh, plus, yeah. Yeah. Like, right. Uh, and obviously Equinix has, has hundreds and hundreds of locations as well. So it's like – you know, yeah, you're, they, I mean, they've, I think Equinix has probably been on more of the acquisition side of the house for, for quite a while. Like yeah. I, things from like digital realty and telex and, um, pretty much all the ones that you can think about from probably like 10 to 15 years ago. Um, but yeah, they, uh, um, the footprint is crazy. Like you said, it's really hard to avoid either one, but thankfully for us, both of them work very well. So, and by us, I mean the, the general us, not, not aviatrix specifically. I'm saying all of us that need connectivity to things. So, yeah. Okay. Um, we got low one last one here and we'll round it out today. So, um, one last article from network world, um, talking about Microsoft agreeing to pay a settlement, um, for a cloud complaint of $22 million to avoid EU antitrust, um, further fines. So, Basically, there was a complaint that was filed. I think we actually talked about this on, on one of the podcasts earlier. Uh, a, a complaint was filed back in 2022 from the CISPE, which is the Cloud Infrastructure Services Providers of Europe, um, accusing Microsoft of unfair licensing practices and that essentially contributed to um, hurting Europe's cloud uh, ecosystem, uh, cloud computing ecosystem, as they put it. Um, so they have, um, you know, that this, this organization, um, you know, is made up of like, I think it said like, it's made up of cloud service providers, but I think there's, it says like 35 members, um, don't even know who, <laughs> what 35 members would fit into that, uh, that category, but, um, it includes the likes of, you know, the big ones, Azure uh, or Microsoft, Google and AWS, um, so they've agreed to pay this fine um, in order to get out of um, uh, further settlements or sorry, they paid the settlement to get out of further fines. I should swap that around. Um, but apparently this is actually kind of ticked off the, some of the other members like Google um, that this is going to um, out of court and kind of using this, this payoff method for, uh, versus, you know, um, actually abiding by the, um, the the laws in place within the EU, um, so it's a pretty pretty deep article. So you can have a further look if you if you want to see um, more info about it. Um, but what about you guys? Have any comments? Yeah, I want to point out here. So it says a couple things that it says Microsoft will develop a product allowing the CISPE members to run Microsoft software on their own platforms, and it must be delivered within nine months. I've never mm. even heard of something like this happening before. That's just super interesting that they were, I, I don't know. I wonder if they suggested this. It doesn't, it doesn't make it sound like it was mandated from this settlement. Um, but it is just weird that they're going to develop a, a product. And, and also 22 million is absolutely nothing. Oh, to, that's, yeah, uh, that's Microsoft. change. That's like that's well, I dropped much a, money. Yeah. I dropped yeah. a nickel on the ground. So I right. shouldn't even bother picking it up. <laughs> Exactly. But but it does also say that it says Microsoft will compensate CISPE members for lost revenue over the last two years. Again, that number is not disclosed. I don't know what that means. 
But funny enough, it says it does not include AWS and GCP. <laughs> so Microsoft is just getting out of, of, yeah. of course, Google and AWS are mad about this. It's just hilarious how this is all like interconnected and, and played out. So are we, when we're talking about the other members though, are the other members just like local private clouds or something like, is that the idea? Yeah. yeah okay. Basically it's a collection of, uh, what, what's it stand for again, Chris, you said it earlier. It's like a European, right? Collection Cloud infrastructure of smaller... service providers in Europe, right? Yeah. Was it? Uh, yes, correct. And I think it's like 35, you said. So, so take out, um, take out, take out three take of out them. Three. <laughs> right. <laughs> But that's still significant. Like how are you, I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot of providers. Yeah. yeah. It's, Whatever it's a they lot have of, to pay. A lot of data center providers. Um, more than, more than I would say on the cloud side, but yeah. Um, you see, you have some things in there like black box and, uh, core tech and looking through some of these names to see which ones I recognize and albeit not a lot of them. Just local, um, local yeah. providers, local cloud yeah. providers. Like, okay. And so the, the so and they're trying to avoid any competition or any trusts. So then the question is: Was Microsoft basically just out competing them on the licensing for Microsoft products and stuff? Like, is that the is that the complaint? I wonder. So I mean, the, the funny thing is that you know history repeats itself. Like this whole idea yeah. of Microsoft antitrust right. EU. Like this is not new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a this is just another day in the in the zoo for them, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I th- to your point, Alex, I'm more interested what this what this product delivery is going to be within nine months. Like, yeah, and what is the product? Uh, yeah, or they just do. Oh, I wonder if they just do something so half-assed that be like, yeah, here it is. It, you yeah, can good run luck it now. Yeah, Here, it, here's it, a way here's, to pipe into Azure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's a and here's your here's your easy uh, guide to doing it. And it's like a manual. It's like you know, like yeah, six hundred pages, ten thousand pages. Thick, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see. All right. Um, I think that about wraps it up. Like I said, there are a couple more um, news articles in the um, Fortnightly Cloud News document, which is linked into the show notes for this episode. So if you want to have a look at the articles we discussed today, um, provide any feedback or read the the other ones that we that we didn't talk about, uh, feel free to have a look on there and and definitely reach out to us, contact us, uh, cables to clouds at gmail.com. Um, find us on all the socials at cables to clouds. Um, we'd love to get some feedback from you guys. Um, and see if, do you have any thoughts about any of these articles, you know, um, anything like that? We'd love to hear from you. So without that, um, please, uh, you know, subscribe, hit the, hit that button everywhere. Um, more importantly, share it with a friend. Um, so if, if this is something that, that you like hearing, um, uh, you know, we'd, we'd really appreciate it if you can share it with someone else that you also might think might find it useful. So, um, with, uh, with that said, I will, um, bid you fair do and we will, um, I'll bid you fair do. Is that even a word? Did I just, I don't know what that is. I'll bid you farewell as well, as well as a uh, fair do. It's um, like half, half French. Fair do. Yeah, I, I don't know where I was going with that. It was, uh, you know, that's, it's nice. It's nice. I didn't fuck up till the very end of the episode. So, um, with that, we will actually bid you farewell and we'll see you next week. Bye. Hi everyone, it's Chris, and this has been the Cables to Clouds podcast. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe to us in your favorite podcatcher, as well as subscribe and turn on notifications for our YouTube channel to be notified of all our new episodes. Follow us on socials at Cables to Clouds. You can also visit our website for all of the show notes at cablestoclouds.com. Thanks again for listening, and see you next time.